No Bigfooters or Sasquatch were harmed during the filming of this video. Just their pride. Hello, beautiful family of light. I am Jane. My higher self name is Roshana, and I'm a nature communicator and an intuitive. And I'm here today to share another message with you from Kuwa'ane, my Sasquatch friend. This message actually came through on May the 8th, and I'm going to read it because I actually recorded it as an audio when it was coming through and then transcribed it. So I'm going to read it to you. And if you haven't seen the video, my Sasquatch story, that would give you some background about how I came to be communicating with the Sasquatch, I will link that below. And also check below if you're interested in reading my book, Conversations with a Tree. That also gives you another sense of my connection with nature and it's filled with beautiful, loving messages from the trees. And I'm very excited that this communication and my task of being a scribe has evolved into connecting with the Sasquatch people because I feel it's because they're here on the earth with us. This connection feels so real and alive and what they share is very much related to our earth experience. They are here because they want to help us and they want us to understand where humanity is at this time and the importance for us of coming back to our natural state of being more connected with the earth, the importance for what we're doing to the earth, what we're doing to the Sasquatch people, and of course also for ourselves. Wow. I want to take whatever she's on. Give me that prescription, okay? You Bigfoot people, this is why I make fun of you, all right? Bigfooters are definitely children of a lesser god. Welcome to Off the Richter. <laughs> hey, my little Squatch monsters, it's time to shake up the Bigfoot community. This is Off the Richter, season three. Bigfoot's your forest friend? Are you kidding me? This is a show where I roast Bigfoot attention whores and hoaxers and Bigfoot superstars. Like me. Bigfoot is like cancer, in my opinion. Did she just say Bigfoot's like cancer? Aw, oh, honey. That's why you're not Bigfooter of the Year. Mm. No, 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 no. Bigfoot is not like cancer at all. He looked like a Neanderthal man with a lot of hair. About 800 pounds. Massive. Oh boy, here we go. Make sure your seats are raised and tray tables locked in the upright position. And the ultimate goal is to pick good solid evidence that, that the forest people are alive and well. And, and uh, You want your Bigfoot video to be seen? Now's your chance. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, God. Let's be honest here, guys. I refuse to believe in Bigfoot. See? He just confessed! Richter is a liar, and Richter is a hoaxer. He doesn't believe in Bigfoot! Ah! But I think it's real. Not because of these stupid white people making Bigfoot videos on YouTube. The truth with Sasquatch lies with the Native Americans, and it's my job to point out the Bigfoot bullshit. On this Off the Richter, we're going to take a look at a documentary by Bill and Amy Lancaster called Paranormal Bigfoot. <laughs> it should have been called The Inmates Took Over the Asylum or The Bellevue Hospital Exposed. The Short Bus After School Special. So you're going to see Ron Moorhead from the Sierra Sounds which I do think is real. What? Friend of the forest people, Arla Williams, or whatever the hell her last name is this week. Uh, woo woo dummy dum dum, Christopher Noel, who thinks he's so smart, but useless as a pile of Bigfoot books in Steven Struford's dirty bookstore. Ah! 
Oh, and there's also sexy stud muffin Tony Merkel from the Confessionals podcast, and many, many more. Sadly, this documentary did not showcase Barb Shoop, and as you all know, she is the queen of the woo-woo people. Now, for those of you that are watching that don't know what woo-woo is, there is a separate camp in this Bigfoot community that are complete and utter extremists in their beliefs and thought processes about Bigfoot. They don't think of it as just a mystery and possible creature that may or may not exist that has avoided us humans. Oh no, they apply Star Trek nonsense to it and make it out to be the Professor X from the Avengers. Now the link to buy or rent the documentary Paranormal Bigfoot is on Amazon in the description comments down below. And I do highly recommend you watch it, despite what you're about to see and hear from me roasting the Dinga. shit out of this show. It's my job, okay? I'm the I got asshole of the Bigfoot world. I get it. <laughs> now, will you stop censoring me? My God, if I want to say Dinga. Shit, you son of a bitch, I will. So Amy Lancaster says, are you, are you a, a Bigfoot, Bigfoot skeptic? skeptic? Is the notion of an undiscovered primate inhabiting the forests of North America a little far-fetched for you? I'm about to tell you it gets a whole lot weirder than that. Well, that goes without saying, Amy. I will tell you guys what's weird for all of us here. These people that say Bigfoot magically disappears, mind speaks, give you messages in English, transforms into orbs, and teleports into other dimensions, is this Star Trek? This documentary is a woo-woo speeding fiery train wreck. Let's watch. The more these accounts are shared, the more certain details emerge that suggest traits and behaviors that are rare or non-existent in the known animal kingdom. <sighs> this guy here looks like some guy who wanted to smell my underwear and toss my salad. <laughs> Good thing I've got some ranch dressing. 1971, I was involved with a group of hunters uh, eight miles back in the wilderness of the uh, Sierra Nevada Mountains of California, and these creatures came in during the night. Hey, it's Ron Moorhead. I love his name. Hey, who here wants to give Ron Moorhead? <laughs> <laughs> and there were six of us involved all together, all witness to this. We all started recording them. The car, they started coming back in. I'd be coming too if I knew I'd be getting more head. You suck. I had my first encounter with the Bigfoot when I was six years old. Well, 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 if it isn't the Wicked Witch of the West, Arla Williams, add new last name this week. Actually, she goes by Arlette Kalich, Colette? Why not go by the name of Jolene or Jezebel? It's appropriate. You know, I did see her give Tom Control a lap dance. Oh wait, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Never mind. And I heard somebody walk up. Well, I thought it was my grandmother, but when I looked up, it was a young male Bigfoot. Of course it was male. This is Jolene we're talking about. And we just kind of stared at each other for a little while. Liar, you were staring at his dick. I know I would. And then he turned and walked away back into the woods. Guess Bigfoot likes his women a little skinnier. <laughs> Maybe a little hard to get, Jolene. At this point, I jumped up, I ran in the house, and I told my grandmother what I'd seen. And I asked her, I said, what was that, Granny? If I was grandma, I'd slap a bitch. Quit flashing Bigfoot your boobies. Act like a lady, Jolene. And all she said to me then was, what do you think it was? And so she let me think about it for a while. Oh, that is not a flattering shot of Arla, big ass, leechy, gigawatt, Colette, Kalik Island. I have seen her twerk in person. Bob Gimlin does not discriminate. Um, I believe that orbs are just another energy form of travel. 
And I was told that we humans could do that, but we've forgotten how to do that. Jesus H. Christ on a stick floating down the river. See, this is why I make fun of these people. Just because someone says it's true, doesn't make it true. Using an unknown to explain another unknown is willful ignorance. I bet these people eat Tide Pods. I bet they think we never went to the moon. Hey, don't vaccinate your children. It'll stop autism. I've witnessed them standing before me and just fading away. I've witnessed them standing before me and just fading away. If I ever say anything as stupid as that on camera, take me out to the back and shoot me, please. Because my brains would only be good for kickball at that point. So what they do is not really paranormal as far as they're concerned and many people are concerned. It is just their way of life. I like how she sounds like some kind of authority on the subject matter. What a topic to be a self-made authority on. How embarrassing. What a failure. What a broken human being. My God. And as we grow in our minds and open our minds, then we begin to experience some of those same things. Yes, I agree, but you need to do drugs to achieve this level of oneness with the forest people because that <laughs> don't fly with something called reality. They do things that a lot of people question, but I always look at it as they're flesh and blood as we are. No. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't be making absurd claims that Bigfoot can turn into energy orbs or cloak. Then say they are flesh and blood. Let's turn off my off the Richter personality for just a second. Flesh and blood cannot change shape and become invisible. It will kill you. The central nervous system would not survive such a traumatic endeavor. Think about it. You cannot explain it with quantum theory either because there is no subject to derive theories from. You're talking about disintegration and then reassembly, the energy required, the bandwidth, Teleporting one Sasquatch would therefore probably require taking the entire U.S. power supply for more than a million years and take some 4.8, what, million, million years to transfer or about 350,000 times longer than the universe has existed. It would literally be quicker to walk. So tell me. Oh, big butt in the woods, Arla. How does Bigfoot bypass all of that? Get an education. The earth isn't flat either. Sorry to poop on your parade. Now let's not forget the neurons, memories, thoughts, or personality that is being duplicated on the other side of the teleportation. If you want to make up fantasy with Bigfoot, why don't you say Bigfoot uses a wormhole to disappear? At least a wormhole is, more, is a more viable theory, but realistically, I think we're having a six-year-old child with crayons describing what they're seeing when it comes to open-heart surgery. Way beyond their grasp of understanding. That's these Bigfoot people. They do things that make you think, that get you out of the box. I'm Bob Gimlin from Yakima, Washington. Uh, and my uh, reference to uh, the Bigfoot film is a Patterson Gimlin film. Uh, was acquired in 1967. Oh no, it's Bob Gimlin. They've recruited him too? Say it isn't so, Bob. Oh. Bob Giblin's a sellout! Oh! They leave 
presence for for us uh, different types of things. They they leave stick formations. One time they left a little toy. Bob, what are you saying? Bob, stop! Someone take the microphone away from Grandpa before he says anything more. Before he says the Patterson Gimmer film's a hoax. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, we left them food to eat and they leave us presents back again. It's the thought of a thank you, kind of like a thank you. And so that to me means that they're more human-like than, than animal-like. Now see, that makes more sense than Star Trek technology being applied to an imaginary creature with telepathic capabilities. If Sasquatch is real, which I think it is, it's a hairy hominid with enough intelligence to avoid us for centuries. And I will admit, exchanging items on the down low with an intelligent being is a possibility. And maybe because it happened once, doesn't make it continued expected behavior. A Bigfoot could have walked into a tree and made a knock sound. Now Bigfoot do wood knocks. Bigfoot could have tripped and fallen over a cliff, which made you think he disappeared. And while I'm on this subject, Dr. Alan Hynek, who was part of Project Blue Book from 1952 to 1969, was paid by the U.S. Air Force to debunk UFO reports, okay, with made-up stories like swamp gas. Google it. To this day, swamp gases are used to provide alternative theories for UFO sightings. Don't believe everything you hear, people. People make shit up all the time. A lot of people ask me how I got involved. Well, I got involved because my birthday happened to be during the Halloween season. And on my 10th birthday, my parents gave me a radio as a birthday gift, and I was sitting around a radio dial that <sighs> night, and uh, there was some radio discussion about unusual happenings. What's up with his teeth? Oh my God. I was wondering why he was talking funny. <laughs> Hey, maybe his parents should have taken him to the dentist instead of giving him a radio? Just a thought? <laughs> maybe he should have been smoking at the age of four? <laughs> maybe he should have gone snorkeling at the La Brea Tar Pits? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dude! <sighs> Brush your teeth! <laughs> Sorry. Um, hey, Bill and Amy, <laughs> the next time someone has a parking lot for a mouth, do this with your editing, okay? Please. We don't need to see this American Dental Association nightmare. That have some type of strange phenomena or even a UFO connection to some of the Bigfoot reports. What, what is going on out there? Nobody seems to have the answer. Stop the show. Do you want to hear my personal woo-woo theory? What if aliens are protecting Bigfoot from human-caused extinction? Maybe they are plan B in case we blow it like the dinosaurs did. Maybe the star people breed them here and then take them back to planet Xenu for slave labor. Could be true. Hell. Those far out theories are just as good as all this shit these people are slinging at us. In some cases, there would be trails of footprints that would just suddenly stop and vanish. It didn't make any sense under the ground conditions that we were seeing. But since that time, we've had other incidents, even in fresh, heavy snow, where there's a series of tracks, there's no other tracks around, and these large footprints suddenly just stop and disappear. Okay, let's look at this. Have you checked everything else off your list before you automatically assume it's a Bigfoot? Like hoaxers? A big bird. A little Bigfoot being taken by a big eagle. Could happen. A gentleman came in here. He lives in South Georgia. Wait, wait, let's rewind. That guy is good looking, okay? Look at those bedroom eyes. He could tell me anything he wants. 
Sign me up for the woo-woo train. <laughs> now let's take a good listen to this guy's retelling of a story. Twilight Zone much? He was about 17 years old and him, another friend of his who was his neighbor, he didn't know very well. And uh, one of his friends from school and two girls, which were sisters, so it was five of them in a van. All of a sudden, all heck breaks out in the back of the van. I hear screaming and the van starts to rot. I turn around and where one of my friends was sitting, he's no longer there. Sitting in his place is an eight foot hairy giant person looking bewildered, almost like shocked. Everybody's screaming at him. He says, I don't know where this thing came from. I reached over to open up my driver's side van door and when I grabbed my door, I inadvertently hit the interior light. He said, I turned around and looked in the back of the van and where, my, where this thing was sitting, my friend was back, looking just as bewildered. Now Bigfoot is a shapeshifter? Swapping places with humans? Inside a van? So I think that that's something just to bear in mind is that the terminology itself um, can be a little problematic. <laughs> you have to make sure that you're talking about the, the, the same things. Look at what this Darby guy just said. Can I get an amen? Amen! Scientists, historians and such what academics tend to um, focus on what is probable or at least what is plausible. Um, and even if one says, well, hey, is it possible that Sasquatch, is it possible that Bigfoot is an extraterrestrial human hybrid that rides around in flying saucers and engages with people telepathically? Maybe, maybe that's possible, but that it really seems a stretch. <laughs> I really like this Darby guy. It's more than a stretch. It's furnish jittery. Where's my hat? Hm. Some of my team members and I were at a location. Oh God, not this ashtray uh, mouth again. Fast forward. I don't care what he's sharing, even though it's about telepathy. I can't look at that mouth. Yes, I believe in mind speak or telepathy. I mean, humans use it all the time and don't even realize that they're doing it. Oh God, not this bitch again. Of course she believes in telepathy. Humans use it all the time. Uh, you be riding down the road maybe with somebody and something comes into your mind and that person says that very thing and you go, wait a minute, I was just thinking that. Well, how did that happen? That thought was out there and you picked up on it. <sighs> no, you big butt wackadoodle. It's called shared communication. Coincidence? It's not reading minds. It's knowing the person well enough to finish the other person's sentence. I think that telepathy or mind speak, as people often call it in, in the um, Sasquatch research field, is a natural ability shared by many human beings. Oh God, not this Bigfoot nerd. Meet Christopher Noel. This goober actually believed Rick Dyer, the infamous hoaxer, shot and killed a Bigfoot from behind a Home Depot. He even wrote about it in his book, Impossible Visits. Now this poor retard, oh wait, I shouldn't say that word. Well, this poor, think of a better word, I don't know, um, sad, lonely, desperate, special needs, planned parenthood, reject, I don't know. This sad man, okay, he was shaking when I met him. Literally shaking his feet at Sasquatch Summit. I guess Richter is kind of scary, but I honestly don't bite. Well, maybe just a little, but here's a spoiler alert, okay guys? The mean, nasty Richter that you see on this show isn't the real Richter, no. I'm far more worse in person. 
I'm actually writing a book on mind speak, and I'm getting a lot of feedback from people who have experienced this. And I'm researching studies that have been done into human telepathy. And not only has it been proven to be statistically significant what people can do through telepathy, but it has been shown to be especially prevalent among autistic savants. So that, to me, is another building block in this um, my theory about the affinity between artistic savants and Sasquatch. Autistic savants and Sasquatch? Let's Google autistic savants to see what this chemo baby Bigfoot retard is saying. Autistic savant refers to individuals with autism who have extraordinary skills not exhibited by most persons. Historically, Individuals with these exceptional skills were called idiot savants. A French term meaning unlearned idiot. How appropriate. How long is this documentary? 90 minutes? I'm only 23 minutes into this cartoon? There is a, a thing called telepathy and, and sensing things that we have that hardly anybody denies. And you get into that, and how do you explain that? You have to get into the quantum field, quantum mechanics, to understand how everything works from the subatomic level, everything. The subatomic level of your cell, way down deep. <sighs> People might not like my outlook on mind speak, but I don't buy into that. I don't, I don't believe that something can put a thought in your head or communicate with you, literally have a conversation. With our advancement in science and what we, the leaps and bounds we've seen over the last hundred years with communication, with travel, with science, with everything, you would think we would be ahead of it by now, let alone a flesh and blood creature in the woods that literally has to hide from us. If it's that superior, why would it hide from us? Wow. This guy, Russell Accord, is speaking logically. This train of critical thinking is desperately needed in the world of Bigfoot. Someone should give him a TV show. Oh, yeah. There are um, people who claim that they have seen Sasquatch disappear. And a good friend of mine, whom I trust completely, saw one crossing in front of her in the daytime when she was driving. And it all of a sudden was not there anymore. Now, many people um, move to the interpretation that they are interdimensional, that Sasquatch can um, enter a portal and go to another place. I think there's no reason to be able to say 100% that that's not possible, but my turn of mind leads me to want to explore all other possibilities first. Okay guys, let's talk about how far these Planned Parenthood superstars go too far with their Bigfoot bull Christopher Noel met presidential candidate, the gay guy, Pete Buttigieg. I can't pronounce his last name, but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, um, he posted this photo of them and said, after more than three hours of intensive talks, I was able to extract a promise that he will, as his first act after inauguration, recognize Sasquatch as an indigenous people. Christopher! Christopher Noel! God, you're embarrassing yourself with an elected official. How could you be so stupid? Ah! You can't make this up. Dude! Dude! There's one thing I, I do believe, they have to be flesh and blood because they breathe, they walk, they leave prints, they poop. My! My question to people who want to live just in that one world, could there be more to them? And I think there definitely is more to them, and I think the answer is in the quantum physics. Oh God, Ron, apparently there is such a thing as too much head. I know you all wanted to see more head, me too, but when the head starts giving you a headache, you're doing it wrong. 
Unknowns explaining another unknown is anecdotal. This appeal to nature fallacy is using a massive amount of assumption. Boring. Countless reports um, say that people are walking in the forest and all of a sudden all of the crickets and katydids and birds and frogs go silent. This is a very common um, phenomenon. Oh, this is going to be good. Let's hear what Pip here has to say. You know, crickets will silence themselves in response to vibration, but they won't stay silent. And if Sasquatch stays still, as they're famous for doing, just stock still, the crickets would start up again. They would just wait for the vibrations to stop, unless there were an electromagnetic field filling the environment right around the Sasquatch, in which case the, the insects and the frogs and the birds would likely be caused to fall silent because of that. Oh God, Bigfoot is emitting an electromagnetic field now? What I don't understand is why do people assign so many special abilities and superhero powers on a creature that may or may not exist? What are they lacking in their real day-to-day -day lives to live in such a fantasy world? If I were to witness such an extraordinary supernatural event, I would keep my damn mouth shut about it until I knew what it was I was witnessing. I wouldn't go on Facebook and post my experiences and special needs Bigfoot groups. No, I would seek answers the right way without drawing negative and justified attention to myself and my claims. Remember my little Squatch Monsters, the burden of proof lies with the idiot making the claim, not for everyone else to disprove or validate. I have no doubt whatever we're dealing with, there is an energy connection there. Some people have actually tried to take photographs and the camera malfunctioned while they were taking the picture. And afterwards it worked fine again. Stan Gordon's argument is invalid. Because then, how do you explain so many famous videos like the Freeman footage, the Patterson Gimlin footage, the Memorial Day footage, Independence Day footage, the Stacy Brown footage from Florida. They all required something called battery power. Well, unless they're all hoaxes. Because if they're real Bigfoot, real Bigfoot turn off your equipment using its special powers. Yet Barb Shoop, the queen of the woo-woo, filmed this thing using an iPhone, or it was an iPod, I don't know, it was an Apple technology. So explain that. Bigfoot is picky with what it decides to turn on and off? What the heck was that? Fascinating. Did you see that? I, I have a naturalistic, empirical uh, approach to the subject. So I would rather rule out every possible scientific, natural explanation before I begin to find recourse to other sorts of explanations, supernatural explanations, or what I consider more magical thinking. Someone please take the microphone away from him. It's like trying to explain and validate being crazy by sounding smart. How's that for a naturalist empirical approach, Pip? When people find that they're being zapped, as they call it, zapped, um, and their electronic equipment becomes disrupted, uh, some people find that to be um, paranormal. I. I think it's more likely that it has something to do with electromagnetic fields that are naturally occurring in our world and that somehow Sasquatch is able to marshal and use. It's found in the animal kingdom to be, drum roll please, infrasound, which your brain reacts the same way an animal does that's going to be prey. Many animals can hear infrasound like whales, elephants, rhinos, hippos, giraffes, alligators, squid, cuttlefish, octopus, and even pigeons. When it comes to humans, there are changes in blood pressure, respiratory rate, and balance. But oh no, let's make Bigfoot something so special and unique to be able to use comic book superpowers. Guys, at the end of the day, there's no data for super duper bull.
none, zippo. Just because Pip here does research on the subject doesn't make it real or authenticate Pip's position on the matter. He's not asking what is causing these anomalies. He's telling you what is causing it. And that's as good as a Sunday preacher telling you to get on your knees and well, well, you know the rest. <laughs> false prophet, guys. False self-appointed prophet. That's a dick. The general consensus seems to be, not, that, not generally speaking, that these are a naturally evolved creature that came from our distant past that perhaps branched off of us. But my argument with that is that these creatures are super predators. They are perfectly evolved to hunt from wherever they evolved from on this planet. And it makes no sense that, these, that their fossils and skeletons are not in our fossil and skeletal records. There is no logical explanation why we have fossils from millions and millions of years ago. We have fossils from 6,000 individuals, ancient human individuals, scattered throughout our museums in the world, but we have zero of a super predator that inhabits every continent on this planet except Wait. for Antarctica. What? That simple fact negates the natural progression and evolved on this planet. We should have the proof and we have, other than a few pictures and some great audio, we have no hard proof of 10, 11, 12 foot giants living amongst us, thousands upon thousands of sightings. So my argument is that if they are what a lot of people say they are, where is the proof? Now, a handsome stud David here leaves out that these woo-woos say things like, I'm not out to prove anything. Then why make these crazy, extraordinary claims? You can't be on your Thanksgiving table and flee the party. You can't have your cake and eat it too, okay? This is your mess, so prove it. They're not apes, but nor are they supernatural wizards in my view. They are um, a, another evolutionary line of the Homo genus. And according to Melba Ketchum, whose work is controversial, but according to what she has found, I think it's pretty clear that Sasquatch arose through um, a hybridization between human females and males of another species that we haven't yet discovered. Stop it, Pip. You're embarrassing yourself. Dr. Con artist Ketchum said in her press release that Bigfoot bypassed the tree of life. It has no relative for scientists to draw theories from. It just went poof, okay? So shut up. You're sounding like a lying politician, a cat in a cardboard box trying to cover up its kitty cat. I have never had a problem with science. No, but she has a problem with her hairstylist. You can't just dive into the Bible to get the answers with the, when it comes to Bigfoot. There's other literature that you need to look at as well in order to try to start connecting dots. And that's all we're doing. We're trying to connect dots. Oh, look girls, eye candy, finally. Yum, yum. Tony Merkel suddenly appears one hour into this documentary. He's a sight for sore eyes. He's nicely shaved. His beard is trimmed, he's good looking, and he's got all his teeth. The fact that maybe, maybe, if they did this, these cryptids that we're seeing are actually a Nephilim remnant from ancient days. And if that's the case, would they have some kind of supernatural capabilities like their fathers? Oh God, here we go. Make sure your tray tables are raised and locked in the upright position. We're on the subject of the Bible and the Nephilim creating cryptids. Yeah! See guys, I've had the Bible thrown at me my whole life because I'm gay. And let me remind you guys that the Nephilim were the offspring of the sons of God, the Jews. 
and the daughters of men, the Gentiles, before the deluge. And that's all according to Genesis. How come these Bigfoot people aren't pointing their fingers at the Israelites and saying, Sasquatch? And let's not forget that it's in Genesis. And let's not forget that the Old Testament says, I should be put to death in Leviticus, chapter and verse 2013. Know your Bible if you're going to use it to support your arguments. Don't use it to create fantasy. It's disrespectful. And speaking of disrespectful, <laughs> let's compare Bigfoot to autism again. They don't seem to, to need to be solitary as human autistic people tend to be. It seems that they feel that their group is all an extension of, of oneself whereas the human race is the other, so it's different. I think my hunch is that in ancient times there was a common ancestor between us and Sasquatch that possessed some form of what later evolved into our form of autism. Shut up! Next you'll be comparing Sasquatch to people with cancer. Oh wait, that's already been done before. Mm. Bigfoot is like cancer, in my opinion. Jesus Christ. You start off thinking you're gonna be looking for a relic hominid or maybe a missing link. And, and, and then you start getting reports, first-hand witnesses that describe things to you that they've seen them do with their own eyes that defy logical scientific explanation. And at first you, you dismiss them as maybe they were mistaken or it was a trick of light or maybe they're, these, these folks are not telling, being honest with you. But when the same kind of reports come in over and over again, and you, you start to see patterns emerge that you can't ignore anymore. You realize that what these creatures are, even though you may not have a, a hard answer for it, they're much more than we think they are. And whether they are a creature not native to this planet or this dimension I don't know for certain but I know f quite confidently that they are not a naturally evolved creature from this planet now David Bakra drops the ball and makes a conclusion on Sasquatch based on zero data what they are, boy, that's, it's really hard to put your finger on. I don't know anybody that knows for sure what they are, but I know what they're not. And that's why I'm still digging into this every day, 15, 16 hours a day, it never stops. Sounds like David here needs a new hobby. 16 hours a day, every day, on absolute conjecture and fantasy? <sighs> I think if I knew what they were, some of the fun would be taken out of it, some of the mystery would be taken out of it. But I think when we, we finally come to the answer, it might be an answer that you can't tell anybody. It, it might be an answer so, so frightening and scary and, and disturbing that it might be an answer that you have to keep to yourself for the rest of your life. You may have to die with it. I can agree with that. So will the secret government agents responsible for the great Bigfoot cover-up Please tell these woo-woos what Bigfoot really is so they will shut up and quit making Bigfoot out to be a joke. It's hard enough we have to deal with hoaxers on a daily basis. Let's start weeding out the weakest links. Oh wait, I'm an alleged secret government agent. Oh my god, I totally forgot. This is all my fault. Well, I will be making some calls. Pip and his merry band of woo-woos will now begin to disappear. Hello, this is Agent Richter Riolo. I would like to speak to the BFCB, the Bigfoot Cover-Up Bureau. Yes, it's time we release the truth about Sasquatch so that all these woo-woos can get on with their lives and get back to their coloring books and basket weaving at the mental institutions. Thank you. They are like us in ways and they are not like us in ways. I'm very comfortable 
in my beliefs and who I am. And I'm comfortable with people challenging those. Uh, that's a blatant lie, Arla. Come on, girl. You and I have known about each other for a long time. If you were comfortable with people challenging you, and I'm comfortable with people challenging those. You would not have sent people to infiltrate Facebook groups like the Coalition to do your Bigfoot bidding and attack Steven Struford. Ah! How soon we forget, Arla? It was only four years ago. God, why can't you Bigfooters ever be authentic? Granted, Steven Struford deserved everything he got, ah! but at least own up to it. Let's end this paranormal Bigfoot roast with Tony Merkel. I think it really boils down to what's your background? How, what, is, what is your worldview of life? Not Bigfoot, not ghosts, not aliens, but just in general, what's your, what's your view of the world? Like I operate off of my theological foundation. I'm a Christian and I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I believe what's written in the Bible. And so that's where I build my foundation. So he doesn't need science to give him answers, and that's okay, like Christianity. Bigfoot is 110% belief-based, as you saw on this Off the Richter. Yet, like with Christianity, the comparison to Bigfoot is this. Both are a mystery and cannot be explained by science. It's ignorant to say Bigfoot isn't real, based on having no evidence to support your argument. And it's just as ignorant for people to impose their views on Sasquatch based on no evidence to support their argument. After all, this nonsense, at the end of the day, I still do think Bigfoot is real. And unlike most, I am open to the idea that it isn't real. Because from a science-based perspective, you have to consider all possibilities and not tackle this subject with a biased point of view, regardless of what your friends say or what these broken people in this documentary claim. It's an ounce of truth with a gallon of bull****. <laughs> Try and censor that. Ay, caramba! And now it's time for our hate mail off the week. Let's get retarded. This message comes from Gunner. Is it Gunner Monson? Hmm. I think so. And Gunner Gun Gun says, Do you have to use the word retard all the time? You're doing the same thing. There are better words that can be used to describe some of these people. You are dangerous. You upset the money making apple cart. Great show! Well, thank you, Gunner. My producer and I have been talking about using alternatives for the word retard, and I think I came up with a few that describe these Bigfoot losers more effectively. Failed abortion. Planned Parenthood reject. Backyard abortion survivor. <laughs> she doesn't like that one. She says it's offensive. Fetal alcohol champion. If you guys have any other suggestions for me to describe these people, let me know in the comment section below. Well, on this Off the Richter, I got to shake up the paranormal Bigfoot world <laughs> with special thanks to Bill and Amy Lancaster. They probably will never speak to me again after this. And on that note, we have only four more episodes to go for this season. Is Bigfoot your forest friend? Is Bigfoot braiding your horse's hair? Is Bigfoot touching your no-no? Tell me all about it in the comment section below. I can't wait to hear about it. So subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, share the video with your friends. They'll love you for it. That last clip there where you hear a lady that scared me and she says I have to get it on tape. She recorded that with her iPhone. Wow.